Hello, Culture Matters Podcast. Boy, am I excited for today. Before I introduce our guest, here is a quote just for this episode. The way in which we see things can hardly be distinguished from the way in which we wish to see them. Joseph A. Schumpeter, our guest today, a friend, Culture Matters Podcast, a regular on the show. If you don't know who they are in the show, clearly you don't like me or the show, and you haven't had an opportunity. Couldn't be the guest. <laughs> Couldn't be the guest. They are an advisor, a mentor, a speaker, a master of the master of ceremonies position, a coach. Um, gosh, they have a podcast you must listen to. You know, if you want your message received, you want to talk to this person. Oh, yeah. Their name is John Duffin is back to talk about the first year of the entrepreneur, among other things. And I had to use this quote because it seemed founderish. But thanks for coming back to the show. I'm excited to pick your brain. I'm excited. I'm thrilled to be here, bud. I'll add in terms of all those other really nice words, and that's really sweet of you to say. And major friend of Jay Duran, as well as somebody who respects the heck out of you. So thank you. <laughs> Great to be here. Cool quote, too. Yeah, the way in which we see things can hardly be distinguished from the way in which we wish to see them. I, I want to ask about the wish yeah. of the wish of the founder or like the wish, you know, you start the business. What 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 comes what comes to mind? You know, I guess so the question is, how important is idealism in the first year? starting the business or like the idea or the desire yeah. uh i at least i'll speak for me critical and part of the thing i was thinking about was look i re i still remember the literal first day uh of of the company the literal first day it was i was in hawaii and i remember clicking the button that pulled my website live and I remember I kept, I was, I had left my corporate job a couple of months prior and I was visiting my sister who was living in Hawaii at the time. And I can remember very clearly hitting the buttons and it's like, okay, it's real. And I can remember doing a post on a beach in, uh, yeah, <laughs> in Maui. And, uh, I, and so that vision that you're talking about, it's, it, it was really important to me because Part of it is like confidence. Part of it is this, the excitement. And I'll tell you, at least for me, and part of it was like an unfounded sense of success. And what do I mean? It's like, oh, I'm just going to go do it. Well, I, for me, I had to think that way because then you go to the realism of it. So I remember I get my first, and, and it was originally a voiceover company. That's what it was. That's in my mind. I was just going to go crush the voiceover field. That's that. Bought all the fancy equipment <laughs> and ready to go. Get my first job in maybe a week. So, and it wow. rolled and I loved it and it worked and everything worked rather seamlessly. And I knew it was the right thing because I was working, it was a long job and a long shift and it was working late into the night and none of that mattered to me. It was just great and it felt easy. And all, you know what I mean? And I'm like, wow, this is huge. Until I realized the hard way uh, that the second job was a six month gap between that and the first job. Whoa. So there was a lot of nothing that occurred afterwards. So I think of <laughs> Jay, you read the book being in nothingness and I'm like prior. <laughs> <laughs> so I got both of them in the first year. And it was like, oh, the being, I'm in. This is awesome. This is perfect. Here's my vision. Here am I on a beach, you know? Uh, and then the second, and then six solid months of stumbling, fumbling realizing I was terrible in tech that, you know, um, but it's, it's just me. 
and you have to survive anyway. But all the fear and manic and doubts and all that stuff, that was all me. That was all me. And it's funny because I just had this conversation really, really recently uh, with another podcast. And it was like, so what do you do? You know what I mean? Okay, so this that was the reality for me. And, and, and what was happening in the meantime was I was talking to a lot of people. And, and I'm grateful that I did. Um, and not all of those com- and not all of those conversations were great conversations. All I'm saying is at least I didn't completely hole up because I f- was feeling alone. I mean, I worked in a corporation and there was always teams around me and and you had support. And then all of a sudden it's just me realizing, okay, what do I do with this wire? I don't know. Um, you know, like we were talking hotspots or I'm like, I think that we're, I don't know. Um, yep. And that, that sense of being alone was horrible. And the only way I could find out of it was to just talk to people. So I did. And I would talk to people I was comfortable with. I started to talk to people I was uncomfortable with. One of the things I realized what happened was typically two things. Number one, people more often than not, will offer some sort of help or support. If nothing more than, oh, you should talk to so-and-so. And And that was good. So I did. And that was good enough for me. Like like the sense that they may not have been able to solve that sense of isolation, that sense of insecurity uh, that was going on, the sense of just flailing and doing but they would guide you. So number one, it was like, for me, it was, um, I felt lucky because I was just talking to people and they would send me to other people and then they would send me to other people. And then all of a, not all of a sudden, but I was getting the sense that things were getting solved. You know, it wasn't like a lot of work was coming in, but processes, systems and process and the things that needed to be done were starting to get done. And that's thanks to other people that were, relaying me to other people. I think of, you know, the beginnings of the foundation of the friendship, business relationship, all the great things between me and you, right? That was not a direct path to be like, oh, let me just get to my buddy Jay Durant. It wasn't, you know, it was like between that and banging my head on social media, promoting things that were not there, Check me out. Let's go to you. Know I mean? <laughs> and then they do, you know? <laughs> and so it was the sense of you have to build things and you have to take this leap of faith. And, wow. and I think the other part that was really helpful was the sense that it was the vision that I had at the very least, even I, I, I was able to morph it. And that's what I was about to say. So that it's like, my original vision has very little to do with where the company is now. I absolutely still do voiceover stuff. I mean, I still do, and I love it. Like, But in my mind back then, hosting a podcast, guesting on podcasts, none of that was realistic. I, I didn't know that was really? even – no, absolutely not. No. Um, I didn't see that. I saw the, the social media. I got that. I saw the networking. I got that. Those were things I was comfortable with in the first few months because I understood the marketing arm from what I used to do. But I didn't understand the sense of where was it going to go? How do I merge creativity with business? How do I uh, oh, reinvent myself? I'm the sales guy. I'm the sales guy. I'm the sales guy. I'm the sales guy. Now I'm the creative guy. And uh, and and I'll and one I'll say one mistake that I made that got corrected that I'm grateful for that, that like lessons learned and I'm really happy to learn them is I disassociated in those first few months myself from what I used to do. I wanted you to know me as a voiceover person who does voiceover work. So. The over 25 years of things that I did, I'm grateful to say that I was exposed to, that I did, I was included in. I just cut them off like I cut off an arm. I want you to know me now as 
<laughs> so I'm changing my LinkedIn profile and taking off all those keywords and not even speak. I rarely was speaking to the people in the field because that's not me anymore. And and one of the thank God lessons learned was, well, you can also include what you did and you should. So, <laughs> so um, I then after was starting to talk to those people, but it, that was in that first year. Oh my gosh, I was like, I'm a voiceover person. And it's like, and the good parts, I took the lessons, I networked with people, I put myself in great positions. I mean, there was a lot of effort and there was a lot of flailing, you know? Um, and so it probably wasn't until later in the year when it was starting to get to a point where it's like, oh, I could do a podcast. I, I Oh, okay. And the podcast has morphed. For me, the podcast has morphed from where that began. The podcast originally was voiceover tips. That's that's what it began. I still have those episodes up. You know what I mean? The initial episodes was simply me. The sense of that building a foundation of authenticity, helping people. It wasn't until people literally were coming to me from my former circle and asking about, hey, I'm running into this situation, blah, 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 blah. And it was really conversations. They were informal. It's funny. Uh, I'll use a term that nobody uses anymore. And and with good reason. And nobody's around to do it. Like they used to about like standing around the water cooler. And people were like, what's a water cooler? Like, <laughs> you don't need to know. <laughs> you get your water anywhere. <laughs> um, but it was that. And then it was like, then, and and I would say the realization that I could leverage, God bless you, I, that I could leverage what I did into what I do. So that took the at least majority of the first year to get myself right. I'm laughing because I sneeze, but I didn't sneeze. So the yeah, audience, it was a very, very you, silent. The audience is just going to think you're schizophrenic. God oh, just throwing religious <laughs> epithets, right? Yeah, that's yeah. My thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question around this conversation. So people came yeah. to you yeah. from a former circle, mm -hmm. former circles, and they Correct. were informal conversations. Right. Is that, did that lead to business? Yes. It absolutely did. That's why I brought it up. It absolutely did. Uh, it, 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 and, and how it manifested. So like like the manifest, like you manifest like, oh, I could help people in that regard. Oh, and how did I know? I knew because you would have the follow up conversation. How did it go? Oh, you know what? And I and it was and I was realizing I wasn't telling people what to do. I never I wasn't great at that when I was supposed to be telling people what to do. <laughs> that was actually my job uh, to tell you what to do. And I didn't love that sort of bossy sort of, you know, but the making suggestions, sharing your experience, putting options on the table, all the things that that make sense in coaching. Right. And so. How did it manifest? It would be like, I'd be like, hey, how did it go? Jay, you know what I mean? And it would be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, great. A we, I wound up getting the promotion or moving to there or, oh, that's great. And it morphed into a singular person and then it morphed into multiples. And so that was where it was like the sense that Oh, and, and I'll add one more thing, which is, how did I know? that? So the sense that people were, the follow-up demonstrated results that were tangible and positive. And the other part, I still feel this way. And this is like, so one of the reasons why I, I can laugh about the fact that I was literally separating myself from the field that I was in for over 25 years for no reason, no reason whatsoever, but I was trying to, dismiss it but why you don't is that the answers like people would say what do you think or what should i what could i do or i don't know what to do or i'm jammed up or whatever i remember that two things number one the answers always felt relatively easy to me and i could back them up 
and and there's all kinds of things that I'm not capable of answering. So I don't want to act arrogant or whatever. You know, like I was saying before in that first year, uh, I had to replace a cable for one of my voiceover things. And that was such a science project. That took two months because I didn't know what the hell to do. And I didn't know what the cable was. And I didn't know where it went. And, I, and, and so that was a two-month ordeal of why don't you have a backup cable? But... <laughs> These were easy questions for me to process. And it was one of those things where, folks, it's it's like when you know something, there's this confidence that comes in terms of that. So it's like you trust it. It's like, oh, yeah, right. I remember what. And, and the other part was it was really important to me to make certain that I wasn't telling a bunch of what they used to call old war stories because I didn't find that relevant. Right. So for me, it was really important to make certain that the information made sense. And in this case, we'll talk about in 2024. Not what happened in 2003. Because times change, processes change, systems change, circumstances change, the vehicle changes. And so I was just I would study up, do research, talk to more people. How does this make sense in the field now? What has changed? What, you know. So I, one of the things that I, I prided myself on is I just wasn't going to tell you what happened back in the day. Because I didn't feel like people care that much. But when you make it current and relevant to present times, learn what's changing, learn what's happening, do the research, you know, you, you, you come to the realization that the, so many of the problems are just very similar. You're just positioning them a little bit differently so it doesn't feel archaic, you know? And it doesn't was feel there, like a history lesson. Was there a level of surprise mm -hmm. when the first client came? Um, shock. <laughs> Way past surprise. Um, <laughs> it was... Talk about, oh, my God, like being so naive. They had asked me like three different times, and I pushed them back. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just trying to help. No, no, no. <laughs> That's happened to me multiple times in, in the way that my company has morphed and, and, and the things have morphed, me just pushing people back foolishly. Um, so when it got pulled together... <laughs> This is why I think it's so important, like not only to trust yourself, but realize you can morph and that you can pivot and that you can change. And often you probably should, um, because if you're so rigid, it's one thing to be like, I'm going to stand in my truth and my belief. But then the other is it's like, OK, what did you know standing on the beach in Hawaii? acting also, you know, proud and confident <laughs> and having no idea about the, you know what I mean? So often, well, you learn things. And so then it came together and then I knew I was doing the right thing because even building those systems and processes and things like that. So I wasn't just, you know, flying by the seat of my pants. It was like, like doing that didn't feel terribly difficult and it felt invigorating. And the stuff I didn't know I learned. You know, and the other part is I can go in with a much I, I like more authenticity than I've ever been able to do because I don't need to know all the answers and I don't need to shove that down your throat or make you believe I know everything. It's putting people in the right directions. Um, it's a service related position that's based on expertise. And it's based on experience and it's based on, you know, like, like knowledge and what have you. So and that's that it morphed into that. But in those first 12 months, if you would ask me, are you going to be an executive coach? Are you going to be a podcast host? Are you going to be a public speaker? Are you a um, future author? Um, I would have been like, not, not only would the answer have been no, I wouldn't have felt a need for it. Why not? 
because I was just going to go crush voiceover. And you'll be like, based on what? And I'll be, well, based on, I'm just going to go do it. And that's part of the thing. Like when you do your first launch in that first 12 months, I, I, I learned for me anyway, that I was arrogant about the wrong things. <laughs> You know, that I was arrogant about the fact that, you know, and, and then and then you get knocked back a couple of times. Uh, there's a six month gap between jobs and all of a sudden your resources are just flying away, you know, and all you're doing is just throwing money around. That's if you were me, buy all the fancy equipment, buy the fancy insulation, you know, have a, 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 a plethora of coaches and tea, you know, and all that stuff. And it's just output. And it was just output. So you can either, you know, just sit and stew or you can pay attention to what's going on around you. And was there a coming to Jesus moment? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was literally, it was toward, it was toward, like, so the business began in March centered on my birthday and blah, blah, blah. That was like a big deal. Like on my birthday, ex birthday, I'm going to launch and right. So whatever um, <laughs> I did. And then toward the tail end of that year, it's like, okay, you're starting to gather stuff and you're like, Oh, 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 this is interesting. Um, <laughs> tech expenses. And I'm making up the numbers, you know, <laughs> $98 million <laughs> uh, <laughs> revenue. <laughs> A hair under $98 million. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, oh, that's interesting. Inside mm -hmm. joke. Right, right. Exactly, right. folks. Don't you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I... <laughs> you got to be so careful with inside jokes. People just get yeah. bored. But as I said, yeah. that was like, my, it was like a reverse vision, right? So I, I literally, it's like the vision as it was like, as it was approaching more toward the tail end of the calendar year, it was like, oh, well, but I will say this. I did get some additional voiceover work that first year. And what was great and remains great about it is it's, it's, it's a joy for me to do. It's, it's, it, it, you know, I'm not saying it's easy because it's a lot of pieces and stuff, but it doesn't feel like work to me. It never feels like work. It just feels great. And it really feels great when they say, yeah, they're going to use it. For whatever. I don't even care. You know what I mean? An internal website, whatever. Great. It just makes me happy. You know, um, that creative process where it's like, for myself, I never thought I was that person. I'm the business guy. I'm the sales guy. I've ever, and that's one of the things where it's like you keep drudging stuff into your head that what you are, which may or may not necessarily be true, and then you're limiting yourself into what you're not. And, and that's the part that was weird. And that's the things that I had to get right in the first year. And I remember like the joy of the second job was a huge sense of relief. It wasn't a big bang job. Second one was not a big bang job at all, but I loved it. And it felt relatively easy, you know, and, and, and I was doing right. And it motivated me and propelled me to then continue to do the work and not give up, not hide under the covers. Like Jesus, I just spent a, a you know, a fortune and I have no money coming in. And, um, and and what it, it propelled me to keep going forward. Just yeah. the ability to be able to morph, uh, course correct, whatever the cliche is, but not necessarily, but not give up. You know, and th and that still holds true to today as as I continue to get to pivot to morph, to try different things, to say yeah to different things. It it for me in that first year. There were several times where I was like, this is clearly a mistake. Um, this is clearly a foolish move. I'm just being arrogant. Why don't I just go back to what I did? I felt confident. Maybe it was just a bad situation at the end. Maybe I, you know what I mean? All those sorts of things. Um, and something kept telling me, don't, don't. And what I had to figure out Toward the tail end of that year was that don't don't was it fear 
or was it a sense, no, you are doing the right thing. Just give it a chance, for God's sake. And I came to that conclusion. <clears throat> that I'm not giving up. That I'm not going to, you know, that I'm going to stay in. That I'm going to allow things to morph. And I'm going to allow the podcast to begin. And I'm going to shift gears and turn it into something else. Uh, which I'm terribly grateful for because to me, it just gives me, you know, I, I love guesting. I love hosting. I love sharing information. I love sharing the fact that if you can just give yourself the vision or not the vision, because that was, like I said, I, I it's more than vision because the vision was standing on a beach in Maui and everything's perfect, right? Perfect sun, perfect day. Flight's not coming for several hours. I literally almost missed the flight because I'm doing these doofy videos talking about this, how confident I am um, <laughs> of, of nothing, you know, <laughs> other than I bought a microphone. And, um, <laughs> but it's when you're speaking with people and when you're learning things and when you're banging your head and you think everything's falling apart um, and then other people either pick you up or point you in a different direction or throw you the attaboy pat on the back or, or just move you, right? Um, I often go back to the people and it's the people. It's it's the people in the first year. It's the people as long as you're doing the business, as long as you're in it. It's like the people. Jay, like you, you know, it, 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 it's you. Hey, you want to record another podcast? Yes. Um do you want to do X? Sure. Um, you know, do you want to try it this way? You want to do it at this time? It's like you lose the rigidity. And that's a great thing. It doesn't blow out your systems. It doesn't blow out, you know, but you, you just lose the rigidity. If you went back to that beach, would you think that all these years later, you'd be recording a podcast at 6 a.m.? On a no. Wednesday? Oh, no, no, no. I, I can tell you, no. Um, that's the rigidity. I can't do this. It's to this. My voice is, said like the arrogance, my voice is not ready. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I sound like an old smoker if I'm talking at six o'clock. <laughs> all well, the rationalizations. All the rationalizations. All the in unnecessary fear and stuff i can't i haven't i won't and then you do and then it feels easy and then it feels great and then that guy that made the suggestion hey do you want to do that and it's like you just you, you look at you think and it's like and, and the only words that come to my mind honest to god are gratitude thank you to you for like and like that because you get put in these directions and certain people are there to propel you or just keep you from falling, you know, like that hand on your back to make sure that you're not falling. Um, and it's it's beautiful because then you get to do, try things. More importantly, you get to do things. And you get to experience. And I, I'll never forget those sense, the sense of real gratitude, which is not confidence. It's real gratitude that you're able to accomplish something. When I realized I knew answers to things, when I realized I could help people, when I realized I could monetize that, when I realized, more importantly, that it was okay to monetize it, that, well, I'm just helping. Why am I charging? Yeah, and get past all that, like th to build the business model around it. Um, your talent has value. Your experience has value. Your time has value. And how do you build a business around that? How do you speak to audiences? You know what I mean? It's like, well, what the hell am I going to talk about? And then you get a couple of people that help you and help you figure it out. You know, how are you going to create a video from what? Well, how many have you done before? Uh, none. Um, well, okay. You know, and, and, and that's the stuff that, as I said, it's the people around you and, and, and trust your instincts. Hmm. Something came to mind from this mm. conversation. It's having a conversation like this every day. Right. Whether it's 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. or 5 9 a.m., 6 a.m., 10 a.m., whatever. Right. 10 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow I got one at 8 to 10 with somebody in Australia. 
p.m. Sure. Um, and one one monologue every day on let's say thirty days of thought. Mm -hmm. That'd be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of conversations and mm -hmm. pieces of value for the listeners. Right. Just those two conversations a day, one with myself, one with somebody else. One with somebody else. And, and by the way, I think they're equally important. You know what I mean? It's it's like you you take the things that are in your mind and you and you don't filter them, you process them. It's like, okay, this one works, this one doesn't, or this one's cool, but try it like that. You know, let that one go. It's beautiful because that's the essence. When I started, when I, like today, my gratitude to you in doing in doing this, not just doing it, but doing this with you, collaboratively with you, is that alleviated the the fear that I had that I'm all by myself. And the answer really is you're not. You're not alone. You don't have to. There's an expression that comes from another sort of program that I'm a part of. And the expression is you never have to go it alone. Well, that gets rid of that sense that I'm all by myself and I don't know what to do. And it's real. So it's not the structured sort of let me look at the org chart. And see who I can either boss around, <laughs> tell them what to do, or have them bring me something. Mm. It's collaborative, and and it's a little more free form. So you have to get right with the rhythm of it. But once you get right with the rhythm of it, it's beautiful. Stuff gets solved. You move forward. Business progresses. What, you know, final question to yeah. the person listening that was planning on quitting today. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? Yeah, right. Just talk to somebody before you do. Literally have a talk, call anybody. Talk to them. Bring air, oxygen, life to what you're thinking. And I, I can't promise you you'll get all your answers, but you'll get something. You'll get something. Bring it to life. Hey, I'm going to quit today because, and maybe that person literally says, okay, so what, and so what are you going to do? Great. So what do you, what's next? What do you do? Do you run the Maui and stand on the beach? Do you, you know what I mean? Hold your phone up. Do you freak out? Do you pull your, the covers over your head? What, do, what are you going to do? And it's in that conversation. With someone who matters, that's the second part. With someone who matters to you, it's in that conversation that you're going to find the answer of the next step. And that's all you need. I'm going to quit today. No, you need to take another step. I have no idea what direction it is for you to take. But you have the conversation and it's what's that next step. And it's in the next step that enables me, I'll speak for me, that enables me to not give up. And then you take another next step and another next step and another next step. But it's the key is give your thoughts, air, oxygen, life, even the ones that you think are crazy. Give them air, oxygen, and life. Let them come to life uh, because somebody will be there and, and find somebody who matters. Last worst case scenario, pay them. Pay them if you need to. Pay them. But have counsel around you. Mm. friend colleague mentor paid don't matter find somebody and give it air oxygen in life and then from there figure out what is the next step that you take and chances are great it won't be give up today it'll be do something else if you're listening to this podcast Please share this with a friend that needs to hear it. Leave us a review on the Culture Matters podcast. Follow John. And we will see you next time on the Culture Matters podcast.